Previously I made a video on the Console One MK3 and how to assign MIDI CCs to all the different knobs and supported buttons and then in Cubase create your own MIDI remote for the Console One which then you could use to control third party plugins inside the DAW. Well we didn't go too deep into the mapping and all the different pros and cons of it. So that's what we're going to do in this video. First of all, I've got two tracks here that I've created in Cubase and I want to insert the console one on both of these. So I'm gonna type out console one with both tracks selected, hold shift and alternate on the keyboard and this will allow me to bulk load the plugin onto those selected tracks. Now, because we're using MIDI CC, I've already got a preset that I've saved in the hardware with all the different MIDI um, assigned to the different controls. So what I'm going to do is recall that first on these tracks. So for track one, I'm gonna open up presets, load up my MIDI presets, and then for track two, again, go to presets, load up my MIDI presets. So now we've got all of these mapped out with MIDI CCs on page one, and when we hold shift, also on page two. So we've got plenty we can work with for mapping to third-party plugins. Now, something to be aware of when it comes to using third-party plugins is that, let's say I'm using the core suite for the filter section, shape section, one of the EQs, the compressor and the drive section, but the secondary EQ, I, I decide to use MIDI CCs to control a third-party plugin. Some people tend to get confused about the signal chain of this. So for anything that you're using with the console one that's supported internally, if it's the core suite or maybe some of the third party plugins that are supported that work and hosted internally in the console one software, the signal change for the signal chain for those is always going to be processed in the console one plugin, okay? So for example, if I'm using the third party EQ, but the rest of it's, you know, all the soft tube stuff, that third party EQ using MIDI CCs to control is going to be processed after the signal chain of the console one plugin. It's always going to be outside. It's not going to be moved internally and then processed before say the soft tube compressor. Okay, so when using MIDI CCs and third party plugins, the signal chain is always processed after the console one plugin if you are using any of the internal stuff, okay? Now, with us loading up the MIDI CC presets on both of those tracks, let's go ahead and load a third party plugin on both of these. So for these, let's type in, I don't know, something by IK Multimedia, uh, for example, like the Pultec EQ. I know there is one internally with UAD that's supported. I've got that, um, but I just want to show you some limitations with the mapping side of things in Cubase and with the Console One software currently. We've got our two plugins on insert slot number two, okay? If I wanna map these, I need to select my MIDI remote that I cre created for the console one, and then open up the mapping assistant. And just for this, I'm just gonna create a new page and uh, we'll do this from scratch, okay? Now I want to map these different controls. So let's map the boost to this one here. So I'm gonna wiggle it, the control on the console one that I want to assign it to, wiggle the plugin control and then apply the map in, and that means now we can, excellent, we can control the boost. Now let's go ahead and control the attenuation with the next one, then we'll move over, boost, and then again, attenuation, and then low frequency will apply to this one, high frequency will apply to this one, bandwidth to this one, and then uh, attenuation select to this one, okay? So we've got all those controls mapped, okay, for that plugin, great. One of the, the immediate limitations is that on this page with these specific MIDI CCs that I'm using, I cannot reuse these now for another plugin. They are assigned in Cubase, they are mapped to this plugin specifically. So if I decide to change this plugin for a different EQ and I assign different controls, using the exact same MIDI CCs, it's just going to overwrite them and then they will no longer work for this plugin, they'll work for the plugin that I've just overwritten them with. Okay, so that's something you need to be aware of. The other thing you need to be aware of is let's say I move this plugin to a different slot, it'll suddenly lose the mappings, okay? It will no longer work with the plugin. Now you might think, okay, what if I just reassign these? Well, yes, it will reassign them, but then it'll 
only work when the plugin is loaded on that slot in Cubase, which is a bit annoying, okay? So it stops you from moving things around and creating a different signal chain. You have to commit to specific slots with plugins and commit to specific MIDI CCs that you can only use once. So if I move this plugin back, it remembers those parameters and it will carry on working as normal, which is fine. Now here's the other thing. If I select track one, um, you'll see that it's still controlling track two's instance of the plugin. Now we can fix this, this isn't a problem. This basically, for every mapping you assign, you need to select it. And then in the focus mode, you need to change it from fixed to track selection, okay? And that means now when we select these different tracks, so track two, yeah, that all works. And then when I go to track one, okay, now that's controlling that plugin, great. All right, so you need to be aware of that. Now something else you need to be aware of, let's go ahead and remove these plugins from here and we'll load up a different plugin entirely. Let's load in the SSL channel strip two. Now, as I said previously, I can no longer use these previous EQ, EQ controls, which are now labeled missing because it can't detect the plugin on that slot because if I start mapping the SSL to these, it's going to override those controls. So my options are use different modules with the different MIDI CCs. I can use the different EQ page with the other CC controls that I haven't got mapped, or I can hold shift to go to the secondary page with the additional MIDI CCs that I haven't mapped. We'll start off by mapping the high pass and low pass filters. So let's do the high pass filter, assign that to the filter control on the module here, and then low pass. Oh, okay. This is something you'll run into with different plugin vendors and some of the different knobs, is that when you turn it one direction, for example, I turn this to the left, it's turning the control in the plugin to the right. When you run into this, what you need to do is for that control, go down to the up down arrow and click on this and it will invert the value so it then behaves correctly. But as I said, remember, now that we've mapped these two controls to these two MIDI CCs on this page, we can't reuse these now for a different plugin. Okay, so they're always going to be bound to the SSL channel strip two. And it doesn't matter if I replace this with a different plugin or I put a different plugin on a different slot and try and sign it, it will always overwrite those MIDI CCs. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that any mappings are saved in the DAW currently. So when you've mapped out your plugins, despite some of the limitations, um, it all, all, Cubase will always remember those settings. So going back to here, if I now replace this plugin, or let's say, let me load up that EQ again, that Pultec EQ on a different slot. Going back to what I said before, these, the, 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 the controls that we mapped for it previously are not going to work because <laughs> they're tied to the slot they were originally mapped on, okay? Uh, it's, just, it's just really annoying, but if I remove the SSL plugin, put this back on that slot, it will then remember those values. And then, you know, if I load my SSL plugin back up, it's going to remember uh, what we mapped for the, the low pass and high pass filter. But again, it, it's just a bit rubbish at the moment. It's very limiting. Unless there's something I've completely missed, then I'm gonna look like a massive idiot. But as far as I know, um, that that's pretty much all you can do currently. Now I can only speak from experience using the Console One MK3 working inside a Cubase Pro 14. It's not like I own every other DAW out there to check how well the MIDI CC stuff works, nor should you expect me to buy all those different DAWs to make a video for maybe a handful of people that are gonna watch this to let you know how well it's integrated. It's not like I'm paid by Softube or sponsored by Softube or any company, in fact. I never get paid to make these kind of videos. Most of the time, I'm just doing it off my own back, unless they've sent me an NFR, and then I might say, yeah, I'll do a video on it and still not get paid for it. So that's where we're at. I think if you are looking at the MK3 as a dedicated MIDI CC controller, then you, you're probably not looking at buying it for the right reasons. You're probably better off looking at something like the Nectar CS12 to handle all your third-party plugins if you have a massive 
one of them. If you're more interested in having a hardware unit with an ecosystem where it's got some great plugins and supports some third-party vendors like UAD, FabFilter, and recently Plugin Alliance, and you want to use those plugins inside of that ecosystem with the hardware controller, then the console one is great for that, okay? I love using it when it works. Anyway, having said that, thank you all for watching, and if I've missed anything, let me know and see you in the next video.